Luna, what an episode! I know I'm not the first one to say this, but this episode was Magic Mystery Cure done right. And I must say, we've been waiting to see this for a long time. There's a lot to talk about and a lot to gush over. So let's start from the beginning. Our story begins as the Cutie Mark Crusaders are feeling a little bit discouraged about not discovering what their true talent is, until Apple Bloom gives everybody a pep talk in the form of a song. When suddenly, Pipsqueak bursts through their clubhouse door, wanting their help in winning the Student Pony President election. With new figure, the CMC helped Pip in defeating their longtime rival, Diamond Tiara. After losing the election and her best friend, Diamond Tiara runs away. The CMC, feeling guilty, decide to follow her and discover Diamond Tiara is truly a diamond in the rough. So, seeing a change in her, they try their best efforts to help her change for the better. In the process, the girls learn that they have a talent in helping others to discover who they really are, and seeing their goals met in the process. This has to be hands, or should I say, hooves down, the best episode of MLP. First off, the music of this episode was some of the best I've seen all season, though I'll Fly Away from Tanks for the Memories was a close second. Amy Kading Rogers and Danny Ingrams make a great pair when it comes to making music that moves the story along. Diamond Tiara's solo song, The Pony I Wanna Be, and The Light of Your Cutie Mark were two of my favorites in this episode. I know a lot of people think that the music causes the pacing to be a bit weird, but but as for me, I thought it flowed very well. Amy did something this episode that was totally unexpected by the fandom. She actually made Diamond Tiara relatable and made us feel compassion for her in the process. I for one have had no lack of wanting to see Diamond Tiara dragged into the pit of Tartarus. But this episode gave us some understanding as to why she was the way she was. Her mother is an elitist prick. I just found it interesting that she would give the CMC such a hard time only because she herself was jealous of the freedom that they had in exploring new things. Seeing her change as a character over the course of the episode was a huge impact on who Diamond Tiara is as a whole. I too was thinking what Scootaloo and Sweetie Belle were thinking when they said, Is it weird that I feel bad for her? If it is, then I'm weird too. It was at this point in the episode that I started to cry along with Diamond Tiara. The liquid pride didn't stop there. After the CMC put away their selfish desires of getting their cutie marks or helping others realize their dreams, were we hit with another set of feels as our girls were magically lifted into the air. I was speechless, with tears rolling down my face when we were given what we have been waiting for for the past four seasons. And I tell you, I couldn't be more proud of our girls. As we conclude the Cutie Mark Crusaders arc, we are given a new mission for our girls. As stated, this isn't the end, it's only the beginning. Amy Kading Rogers, I just want to say thank you. You have put your heart and soul into this series, and the fandom will miss you. I actually got to spend some time with Amy back in BronyCon a few years ago, and I tell you she is one of the most interesting people you will ever meet. My next question is just that, what kind of Mickey Mouse organization is she leaving us for? Oh wait. Well, good luck to you, Amy, in your future endeavors. Overall, this episode has become my favorite episode of the whole series. The music was great, the story was great, and we got to see some development from both the previously despised Diamond Tiara and we get final confirmation on what the CMC's cutie marks were going to be. Did I fail to mention that this episode aired on the 5th anniversary of the show? Well, here's looking to another 5 years. I give this episode a 10 out of 10. This has been a Mason Owl Cat review. Thank you for watching.